we have points for the Adeptus Sororitas and we have a Codex for the Adeptus Sororitas, so we can use our units in 10th edition. Besides how we were already using them in the Index. While I have a video coming out that explains all the unit changes and how to use each unit, this could be considered a bit of a preview. I won't be explaining all of the changes, just key ones that affect where I place them on a tier list. This is Battle Sisters tier list time! So I'm going to be doing one tier list for the Sisters of Battle, but not just one for the Gene Stealer Cult. The Gene Stealer Cult have five detachments, and each of them focuses very heavily on a few particular units. While you may want the same units across different detachments, even the battle line units are in different demand. Some detachments want a lot of neophytes to function, others will require a heavier focus on acolytes. So one tier list for them that covers all detachments doesn't really work. For the Sisters of Battle, the detachments, aside from the Penitent Host, are very general and all of your units can work well in any detachment as there has been a glow up in the rules across the Codex. I think all the units, well, almost all the units, are really good and we will have fun playing with the Codex, but the points at any given time will influence how good it is to take some units. Now you can throw all advice away and play with the models you want and enjoy it. But after getting stomped a few times, you may come back from the board and figure out which of your units in the collection you want to rotate out. I am here to help with that. The June 2024 points are high for the Adeptus Sororitas units. If you look at the Munitorium Field Manual, the MFM, let's just call it the points document, there's a lot of red. The orange is there to show that some parts of the unit or detachment have had a points increase and other parts have had a points decrease. It is not uncommon to be reporting an increase of 15 to 20% for your go-to army list when comparing the index version to this newly released codex version points. It's not all bad. From the discourse online from Sororitas players and the wider 40k community, the response from the codex launch was, oh wow, that is insanely good. So this is the natural response to shush people and not complain about OP ladies in power armor. A few things to note about points, generally. The red colour is comparing to the previous points which were printed in the Codex. Points which people didn't get to play with, as for most, the Codex came out on the 22nd of June and the points were already changed by the 20th of June. So it isn't all points increases compared to the Index version of Adeptus Sororitas, though it mostly is. The points change every three months, so when you come to this video it may not look exactly like this. Feel free to ask follow-up questions in the comments. Okay, so tier lists. As there are so many good units, I can't say that some are auto-include, but you will want a way to generate more miracle dice above the one you get at the start of each player turn. That is player turn, not battle round. So for you and your opponent's turn, you will get 10 miracle dice across the game that way. You get another one for each of your units that die. With the simulacrum, you can find on several units you will get more while you're on an objective. That's how you win the game anyway, so having these units is a good idea. While there is no auto include, not even for battle sisters, I said that you could survive without them before in my previous tier list and you still can, but A is for really good units in the army and you will want some of these, as many of these as you can, B is for the good units but the points on the unit currently are bringing them down. You can use them, but the points discourage you from doing so right at this moment. C tier is the weird one. It's for units that will only work well in one detachment or only with some very specific tactics that can't be used generally. Maybe you've already thought of a unit that goes there. And D tier is for the units I discourage you from including, either because the points are too high or the rules are too weak compared to other options available to us. That may include Imperial agents and allies like knights. When measuring points, and this is something for the future people not watching on release, compare the sisters units to the very similar space marine units. We should be a few points per model fewer than them, and if we aren't then usually something's gone wrong. But maybe that thing going wrong is with the particular space marine unit. So the only question remains, how good are these units and what is Christian von Kamen's advice for which units to include in our holy army of holy sisters? A for Arcoflagellants is a good place to start. Remember that the colours are points compared to their Codex version, so even though the Arcoflagellants are in red, they're cheaper than they were in the Index a month ago. They've lost quite a bit of punch. They're no longer twin linked on their weapons, and their feel no pain has been reduced from a 4 plus feel no pain to a 5 plus feel no pain. 
so you can see why the points have gone down. They're about the only part of the penitent host, like core units, the ones with the penitent keyword, that have gone down in points compared to previously. So if you're taking penitent host detachment, these are going to be your main unit. And they work pretty well in all the others as a great tarpit. Two wounds and a five plus feel no pain is still difficult to get through. What you can do is save some additional points and take them in squads of three. That is still viable and you don't have to go with the box locked version of 10. They come in boxes of 10, but you can still use the previous combat patrol version where they came in a set of three. Points per model, they're cheaper as three than as 10. And then you have a very cheap unit that can just sit on an objective with their objective control score of one, or you take them as a large squad and go for combat. Then you want to activate their extremist trigger word. The way that hazardous now works is it's three mortal wounds to a model and it doesn't spill over onto other models if you fail the hazardous roll. So if you fail two of them, then one person would take three mortal wounds, but you get your feel no pain saves against those hazardous mortal wounds. That's at least how it works in June 2024. So you could be activating the trigger word and still surviving the trigger word even though you rolled a one on your hazardous test for a model. That's a nice change. I don't think Games Workshop's factored that in. They can still be boosted by a Preacher, which is now called a Minister and Priest. I think they're really good for these points. That's an A tier unit. The Missionary is gone. They're not even in Legends, but their equipment is now part of the Minister and Priest. This is a combination of the Index Preacher and Missionary. A polite young man called Auspex Tactics let me use his images, which he made from the Index cards plus the Codex rules. Saves me some time, as until Wapedia gets going, we just have pure quality images of screenshots from the preview people who reviewed the codex. And I will not be uploading scans of a codex to the internet. No, no. So a thank you to Auspex Tactics, in reciprocation for his own shout out when he supported me as the go to Battle Sisters player. The Preacher is only the Blackstone Fortress Preacher with the massive flamer chainsword. You know, the better version. If you had the old metal model with the chainsaw and the icon, then I guess you could use them as the Minister and Priest, but with a power weapon and holy pistol. Who's to say that that icon isn't just shooting bullets or lasers? It could happen. The God Emperor may will it. They've got a lot more versatility as they have an extra rule that allows them to gain infiltrate if they join Novitiates, gain scout if they join Dominions, but mainly they're going to boost your Arco Flagellants because they boost combat units and still give that plus one to wound. As the Arco Flagellants have lost that twin linked, the Priest is very necessary to let them wound. So you can still be activating that Extremist Trigger Word and doing a lot of damage. They're not just a tar pit to hold up enemies, they can do damage and do more so when they have a Priest. They will be a staple of the Penitent Host Detachment. And in that detachment, they also can have an enhancement that lets them join Repentia but there's other characters I'm going to recommend for that particular enhancement. But a Preacher is still A tier. You just have to stick them with a combat unit. Don't bother with Dominions or Battle Sisters. So the Dominions, they're an A tier unit. I'm going to put them up there right now and then explain why. They're interesting as they have the same points as a Battle Sister squad. The Dominions have more weapon options. Well, they can have more weapons. You can have four melter guns, you can have four flamers, four storm bolters, or a mix of them. Usually having all of one kind is best. Unless you're going at small points levels, then having a mix will allow you to be versatile. But remember that this is a squad of 10, so you're always being backed up by bolters. That can be your anti-infantry. Melter guns is probably the best way to go. The Dominions now also have a reactive move as part of their core rules. So when an enemy gets close to them, they can move back and hopefully avoid a charge, then you're still able to shoot the enemy while you're at very close range. They also generate miracle dice because they have a simulacrum. So they can indeed replace your battle sisters, and if they cost the same points, maybe they will. I saw some people online saying that they would never bother taking battle sisters as dominions are the same points cost. I disagree, but Dominions are A tier for all your detachment needs, but they love the Bringers of the Flame the best as they can help your transports to scout. The Battle Sisters Defenders of the Faith has changed. It now provides sticky objectives and then their Simulacrum, same as the Dominions, is the one that generates Miracle Dice. So they're still generating Miracle Dice when on an objective. The Battle Sisters can double up on characters 
which no other unit can. And even then, it's only certain characters. This gives you great combos of powerful character abilities like lethal hits from the Palatine and every Miracle Dice becoming a 6 from the Dialogus for lethal hits on a weapon you need to get that auto wound on. With the versatile weapon options, they have the tools to deal with all kinds of enemies and they can become whatever you need them to be. If you need them to be tough, you can add in a Magifier. If you want to focus them around exploiting some really good stratagems in a detachment, have a Cannoness. If you're taking on enemy monsters, have a Palatine and Melter weapons. And as they are a battle line unit, they're getting a lot of bonuses in the Pariah Nexus missions. Battle Sisters are A tier. You can survive without them, but I wouldn't want to. The third unit that can generate Miracle Dice is the Novitiate Squad. They can have a Sacred Banner that allows them to reroll advances and charge rolls. They can also have a Simulacrum, which generates Miracle Dice. They are okay at combat, they're weaker at shooting, so equipping them for combat is best, and you can have Flamers regardless. They now have the Infiltrate special rule, so a tactic could be having three squads of them, the maximum allowed, and then 30 Novitiates can hold the middle board as soon as the game starts, and that can be fun because they're infiltrating, they're generating Miracle Dice straight away. They combo very nicely with the Palatine, as their bonuses to give rerolls, which means you can try and get those lethal hits, as you can reroll to try and get sixes. And as the Sacred Banner lets you advance and charge, that can make the Palatine go zoom. The problem then is you lose Infiltrate, but the Novitiate Squad gives you a lot of options. And as they are the cheapest version of all of these three units that have Simulacrum, if you just want Mass Miracle Dice, which is maybe a good idea in the Army of Faith attachment, the Novitiates will be where you'll go. The Sororitas Rhino is a very cheap vehicle. It's great. It's fun. It's A tier. It gets your guns, which are generally very short range in the Battle Sisters army. It gets them where they need to be, or it gets your combat units into the fray. It remains 75 points, despite all of the things that it's carrying getting much better in the Codex compared to the Index. That's another A tier unit. Are you maybe noticing a trend here? The Canoness is one of the main characters of our army, at least in the Codex. Not so much in the Index, where re-rolling hit rolls was kind of overshadowed by better abilities like, oh, we can just automatically wound if we roll a 6 to hit, which you got from the Palatine. The Canoness no longer gives you re-roll hit rolls, apart from if you have the Rod of Office, then you're still re-rolling hit rolls of 1. That's nice. I mean, I prefer the Blessed Blade, but never mind. Now there is Sacred Command, so once per battle round, you can use a stratagem for one command point less than it costs, to a minimum of zero. Even though the words it says there say you can have a stratagem cost zero command points, the June 2024 balance patch says it just costs one command point fewer, not that it costs zero, and you have to disregard that second line where it says, even if another unit has already been targeted by the stratagem this phase, you are locked to using each stratagem once per phase, regardless of rules like this. But importantly, we no longer have the previous year's balance patch, which locked it to battle tactics. So this is any stratagem you want is one command point fewer every battle round when you use it on her unit. So, oh yes, she can also join a lot more units. She can join Retributors, she can join Novitiates. These are units that will benefit from having a free stratagem every turn. I say free because most of them cost one command point and would go to zero command points. And if you didn't know which stratagem to spend it on, the Battle Sisters can have grenades. You could just use grenades every time. As we kind of lack anti-tank firepower, generally, grenades are a great option to just be doing mortal wounds from a Battle Sister squad. And despite the changes and how much better she's got, she remains 50 points. This is an A-tier unit now. For the sisters units that aren't mentioned by the Canoness as being able to join, we're usually looking at the flying units, the Seraphim and the Zephyrim, and that's where we have our Jump Canoness, the Flying Canoness with the Jump Pack. She also has Sacred Command, so you can use stratagems for one command point fewer on your Seraphim and Zephyrim, and I'm sure you can look at all of the different attachments and go, yep, I can see a stratagem I would like to be using all of the time, and I would like it to cost zero command points, please. 
so she's a really good force multiplier. It's a bit weird that her hand flamer seems to have been designed like it's an Imperial Guardsman's flamer, rather than having the Battle Sister flamer end. That's unusual. There's a lot of weapon options. I have a video that suggests the best weapons for the kind of cannoness you want to run, but for the boost she's giving to our jump pack units, this is another A tier character. The Seraphim Squad's rules stayed the same, which is to say, they stayed good. Their points went up by 15 points for 5. They have got a lot more utility, and that cannoness with the jump pack can be making them much better. They're extra good in the Bringers of Flame detachment as their 12 inch range pistols will always get the strength bonus of the detachment. They're especially good in the Bringers of Flame detachment and especially especially good in the Army of Faith detachment where you get bonuses for your jump pack units and they can be used to force multiply and provide lots of auras. Even not in those detachments, they're dropping in behind the enemy to deliver a lot of firepower. They're very close in point to the Space Marine Assault Marines with jump packs. And they have some close combat value, Seraphim do not. We're relying entirely on that first round of shooting. The jump pack marines can have two plasma pistols per five, we can have a plasma pistol and four hand flamers, or four melter pistols, or two of each. So we do have more guns, though we have a worse profile. We have to rely on first strike, and take out as much of the enemy as possible, you don't really get to survive if your Seraphim gets shot. But for all the shenanigans that they can do in the jump pack detachment, I can understand why Games Workshop has priced them this way. This is the problem with this. The points aren't altered depending on the detachment you're in. Which is why I'm doing this one tier list for the Battle Sisters, because the points are going to be the same however you choose to field them. But Seraphim have been a unit that supported us all through the Index, I don't see why they would be any worse than A tier right now in the Codex. The Zephyrim are more expensive, at 18 points per model. That's quite a lot for one wound and a 3 plus armor save. Again it relies on you getting them in there and getting that charge and doing as much damage as possible. It's made easier because they have a sacred banner which allows them to reroll charges, and if you're near the Triumph of St. Catherine, you can get an extra two inches of movement and an extra inch on your charge. So you can get that charge, it's just taking a lot of combos. You can still use them outside of all of those shenanigans, so I'm not going to put them in C tier. Their ability is not giving them bonus strength when they charge. They now get lethal hits or sustained hits or both if you charge and you use a miracle dice. They're better than they were in the index, but they're very reliant on you making that charge to do the damage immediately. Seraphim always have that as long as you're landing near an enemy, your guns will be in range, you get to do damage. Enemies can't reactive move from things like Deep Strike, as you count as having moved but you definitely haven't for any of the other rules purposes. It's kind of confusing, it basically means that when you Deep Strike you can't advance and you don't count as remaining stationary, but enemies can't do things like, oh, an enemy has moved within 12 inches of me, therefore I get to move d6 inches. Those don't happen. So Seraphim get to fight. Zephyrim rely on a charge roll with a reroll. So they're our first B tier unit, and I would only have them with the jump pack cannoness and trying as many shenanigans as possible. Outside that, they're okay. Astrid and Agatha are up 30 points but you need to know about their changes. It's a tiny little thing, but now all of the weapons equipped by models in the unit they join have devastating wounds, not just close combat weapons. So if you can put out a lot of bullets with a battle sister squad, or you're going to be using dice and adding in a 6 to wound for your devastating wounds on a retributor squad that has multi-melters to ignore enemy invulnerable saves, I can see why they've gone up in price. They're definitely a better unit. But at 85 points, you need to be doing the equivalent of a Palatine and a Dialogus. Because you cost more than both of them. And I don't think Astrid and Agatha do. They'll be pretty good with Retributor squads, but I don't think they'll do so well at this point level. So I'll put them in B tier, as they have greatly improved and will improve your army. A squad of Battle Sisters firing loads of bolt weapon shots at Orcs with invulnerable saves in the Green Tide, well those invulnerable saves get ignored by devastating wounds. And it works with Flamer weapons, unlike say lethal hits. Good, but there are better options available. The Palatine stayed the same, which is to say, stayed great. 
still gives lethal hits, still throws out mortal wounds when you're fighting, and you can still give her loads of enhancements to improve her combat ability in any of the detachments. And she is the perfect pick in the Penitent Host to go with Repentia, as she is one of the few characters that can have the Catechism of Penitence. I'm glad Games Workshop realized from the Codex, this is worth more than five points. That Palatine is an A tier unit. The Dog Martyr is not great. I'm not saying that she isn't useful. The unit ability to get an extra objective control is okay, and she will let your Battleshock unit still hold objectives as the way that characteristics for objective control is concerned. You set it to the new value, then you add any modifiers, including the Dogmata's plus one objective control. But the Dialogus is 15 points cheaper and can unbattle shock units, and they can do far more with Miracle Dice besides that. As there are far, far better and similar options available, I will almost always be passing on the Dogmata. The Dialogus is an A-tier unit. She's remained incredibly cheap and is especially good in the Army of Faith detachment. Each time you perform an act of faith, the Miracle Dice becomes a six. So if you're doing two separate acts of faith on the same unit, that's two sixes. That's a detachment that will want a lot of this character, and they can double up in Battle Sister squads for exploits with the Palatine. Or if you wanted to spend a lot of points, you can also double up with Astrid and Agatha. Then you can be getting those sixes, which are devastating wounds in a Battle Sister squad, which could be used on a Melter Gun so that you get six devastating wounds, maybe with another plus two if you're in Melter range. That hurts things. The Dialogus is good. Doesn't matter how many Miracle Dice you have, and you want to be generating a lot of Miracle Dice with those three core units that are not all battle line, but all generate Miracle Dice from the Simulacrum, then they become amazing Miracle Dice with the Dialogus. The Hospitaller, for context, costs the same amount of points as the Apothecary in the Space Marine Army. She is better, but the Apothecary has the better profile. But thinking about what we take the Apothecary and the Hospitaller for, you want them for their abilities, not the profile that they provide to themselves. The Hospitaller can now resurrect Battle Sisters. You get one Battle Sister model back every command phase, and if you throw away a Miracle Dice, you get D3 plus one Battle Sisters back. And on top of that, she still provides a feel no pain of five plus to whatever unit she joins. So thinking about points alone, 50 points at the moment, can she bring back and protect at least half a Battle Sister squad, as she is just under half the cost of that squad, and she can, for sure. This is a very hard A tier. The exception may be the Martyred Ladies Detachment, where you want to take some damage and not be at full strength, and spending the hospital points on another unit to get more guns may serve you better. The Imagifier is our other Protecty Battle Sister character. She's up from 35 points to 65 points and her abilities have also improved. Whatever unit she joins gets a two plus armor save. That's really nice. That's doubling the amount of saves you're gonna pass on a Battle Sister squad, as you go from one and a two failing to just a one, assuming no armor penetration. She also gives you a four plus invulnerable save, then you're not relying on the six plus invulnerable save, which you've never really got to roll for Battle Sister units. So she's another defensive character like the Hospitaller, but she can join one unit fewer. She can't join Novitiates, so you can't get Novitiates with a two plus save. As units die within 12 inches of her, then you get better Miracle Dice, potentially. But after making the sort of mistake at the start of 10th edition, where I said, okay, the Imagifier is better than the Hospitaller, I was still in the mindset of 9th edition where a lot of things had high armor penetration. In 10th edition, AP minus one is unusual and about as high as most weapons go. At that point, an invulnerable save of 4 plus is no better than your armor save of 4 plus. Though now that she gives a 2 plus save, it's a little different, but I much prefer the Hospitaller. She's preventing damage with the Feel No Pain, and then bringing models back if the entire unit isn't wiped out. So as there is a bit of a better version available, I'm gonna stick the Imagifier in B tier. Still a very good character, still a character you may want to include, but I find the Hospitaller better. Junith is a support character that generates command points. That's really nice. She stayed at 90 points, but her ability has changed and got a bit more random as it happens only if you pass a leadership test or you can discard a miracle dice to make sure it happens. You can still include Junith to get those command points 
if there's a turn that you didn't get a command point in your command phase from Junith, at the end of your turn you could discard a secondary mission card to get one command point. That's still a rule in the Pariah Nexus mission deck. It's later in the turn, it'll be at the end of the turn rather than the start of the turn, but remember you can't do both. It's a maximum of one extra command point from any abilities. Because of the change to the Canoness in the June 2024 balance patch, the Canoness can use any stratagem for one command point cost less, and that bonus is not locked to battle tactic stratagems anymore. As Junith's cost is nearly twice that of a Canoness, I'm gonna put her in B. You don't have to drop her if you like to include her, her ability still works in a very similar way, you'll still gain a command point, and her heavy flamers are very nice support, but she's not as necessary. So far with these units, we've had the Flying Seraphim and Zephyrim, and the Battle Sisters and Dominions, and perhaps the Alcoflagellants as our main ways to get damage. It's the units of the Sisters army that do the damage the best. If you want to do more damage, and you do, then the Paragon Warsuits are the way to go. Comparing their cost to Space Marine Centurions is the best way, as the Paragon Warsuits have a 2 plus save, 4 wounds, and have now gone up to Toughness 7. So they have a very similar profile and similar amount of weapons to the Devastator Centurions. The Devastator Centurions get situational rerolls to hit, the Paragon Warsuits get situational plus 1 to hit and plus 1 to wound when fighting monsters and vehicles. That is kind of their role. If there's hordes of enemy infantry, which may be the meta for a while, as we're seeing the Green Tide doing well, and lots of Admech models coming out of the woodwork, the clockwork, rely on other Battle Sister units to deal with them, Paragon Warsuits deal with monsters and vehicles. So there we have situational, okay, the Devastator Centurions are a bit better, the Paragon Warsuits are a bit better, Devastator Centurions are 25 points fewer, they have longer range weapons, but they're a bit weaker in combat. The Assault Centurion version is closer in style to the Paragon Warsuits, but with half the movement. Movement 4 inches rather than an impressive movement 8 inches. That version in June 2024 is 60 points fewer than the 210 point Paragon Warsuits. And to make the Warsuits really work, you want more in Val. It may be that for now, take them with Val or don't take them. They're a very good unit by themselves, but at such a points cost, you've got to be using a bunch of shenanigans. I've put them in B tier rather than C tier, as they can work as effective damage dealers in the Bringers of Flame Detachment and the Army of Faith. The Army of Faith because you get two acts of faith per unit, and these are a damage dealer unit, possibly with multi-melters, so you can get that guaranteed wound roll with a miracle dice, and then do as much damage as possible with another miracle dice. And in the Bringers of Flame Detachment, their short range guns, like the Flamers, get better. Their worst one to pick is the Hallowed Martyrs Detachment, as they're a tough unit, and as soon as you lose one you get plus one to hit, which you'll get anyway against monsters and vehicles. Morwen Val is expensive to force multiply a Paragon Warsuit unit. You do want something to fight enemy tanks and monsters, and the already good movement speed of 8 inches can be boosted further by the Triumph of St. Catherine. But it may not be the Warsuits that you combo it with, as at 370 points for Val and 3 Warsuits, which is something we used to get for just over 300 points, the unit as a whole is better. Morwen Val is better than her Index version, but I don't think that many points worth better. So until I've done a lot more playtesting, she's going in B tier. The Triumph of St. Catherine is an A tier unit. You kind of have to explain why you're not taking it rather than why you are including it. I mean, not having the model is absolutely valid. Or wanting lots more units in smaller games so you can actually hold and complete objectives. You could argue that maybe there's less value to the Triumph of St. Catherine, maybe a B tier in the Army of Faith, as you can't duplicate the two acts of faith per unit per phase aspect of the Triumph, along with the same version with the Army of Faith. They don't add an extra miracle, it's either two or two so you can have maximum two. But the Triumph does so much more than that, and is very versatile. You pick which relics you want to use. The main one that people are looking at is the speed boost you get from the Fiery Heart Relic to get your units in there. We want to be close as our weapons are short range, and melee is even shorter. And the Triumph is boosting every kind of unit. Penitent units, tanks, all of them can get the bonuses from the Triumph of St. Catherine, so it doesn't matter what detachment you're using. 
your army will get better near to that centerpiece model. I would definitely include one in 2000 points. For context, the Exorcist costs the same points as the Triumph. Can it do as well? Well, you need other units to make the Triumph work. The Exorcist can work by itself. They have better missiles, they've got an extra armor penetration, but no longer have the heavy keyword. This is not a problem, as a penalty to the indirect fire rule means that a 1 to 3 always misses in addition to the minus 1 penalty to hit. So we're hitting on a 4 plus regardless, unless you can see the enemy. Then you're hitting on a 3 plus. The Exorcist was already at a very high cost in the index, and we've had further rules penalties applied to them and further points penalties. They're still a strong unit for removing enemy monsters and vehicles from outside of line of sight, but sadly, I'm gonna have to slide it into B tier. You're seeing that there's a lot of A tier units though, and the B tier ones are still very usable. So if you wanna, you know, buy these models, especially the A tier ones, don't pay top shelf prices from Games Workshop, use my affiliate links and then your war games are cheaper. It depends on the country you're in, but War Games Portal in the United States gives you 10% off. In the UK, you can get 12% off most of your Battle Sister units from Firestorm Games. In Canada, there's Fenris Workshop for 10% off. And if you're down in Australia and New Zealand, 21% off your Battle Sister models at Gap Games. And using these affiliate links not only helps you, it helps out me as well. Saint Celestine and her two companions have gone up by 25 points. The rules are barely changed. She can now bring back D3 models in an attached unit or one of her Gemini. However, for the points we're paying for Seraphim and Zephyrim, that's not giving you much of a combat damage force multiplication. Saint Celestine can be run by herself. And as we have in the rules FAQ, a clear statement that it's a character unit, but not an attached unit, so you can put the damage onto Saint Celestine and then she'll get a 4 plus feel no pain as long as at least one Gemini is still there. That can be really annoying for the enemy to deal with, but that means you're running Celestine alone and not really getting your models back in your Seraphim and Zephyrim units. I think that what's going to happen is she will lose out to the Jump Pack Cannoness and the free stratagems, well, cheaper stratagems that the Jump Pack Cannoness can provide. So I'm going to put Celestine in B tier. If you want a character that's flying around, well not really flying, but going around by themselves, the Demonifuge is a better idea. Let's just pretend she's by herself. Forget the Eldar person. She went up 15 points, which is kind of a trend we're seeing when comparing the Index to the Codex, and is nearly half the points of Celestine. So if you want Celestine by themselves that's tying up the enemy and being annoying, the Demonifuge may be better. And the Demonifuge can also support your Battle Sisters, though cannot join them. Ephriel Stern is still doing the same things as before, still killing characters, still being a pain to chaos keyword units, and her mysterious saviors, it's going to be a bit different to how it's written. Heroic Intervention as a stratagem is no longer two command points, it is one command point. And with the changes to how stratagems and abilities work, it's still zero command points for Ephriel Stern. And unlike with the Canoness, because the mysterious saviors specifies one stratagem, the Heroic Intervention Stratagem, you can do it multiple times as long as you're doing it the second time with Ephriel Stern. The rules changes are a bit annoying and confusing, but that's how it works at the moment. So if you were thinking, ah, okay, I really like the Halberd on the Jump Pack Cannoness, I'm going to have her alone and fly up to the enemies and do loads of damage for a few points more, and then you're not losing any of your Force Multiplier abilities, have the Demonifuge pair. It's an A tier unit, despite the Eldar. So let's look at the other end of the battlefield. Let's not look at dropping models into the enemy's backfield, but our own backfield. Retributor squads. At 105 points, they were really good in the index. That was a fine points level for them. They now cost 125 points. And when we compare that to the Space Marine Devastators, which is a very similar five man unit with heavy weapons, the Devastator Squad is 120 points. So we have exactly the same problem as we had at the start of the edition. A very similar unit in another army that has more weapon options, heavier weapon options, 
and can have more models so that you can have a unit of 10 so that you can take off ablative bolter people instead of losing your heavy weapons. And they have a better profile as they have two wounds and toughness four each rather than one wound and toughness three. That's really bad for retributors. Their rule has changed a little bit. They can reroll wound rolls of one. And if they're attacking an enemy unit that destroyed an Adeptus Sororitas unit earlier in the game, then they get full rerolls to wound. But when Space Marines have it better, and we're paying more, it doesn't work. So you would have to put this unit in an immolator and the immolators no longer give full rerolls to wound. So for that reason, I've put them in D tier. They cost far too much for what they do and they're more expensive than a squad of 10 Dominions and they can be bringing four melter guns instead of four multi melters. I know it's fewer shots, but you get more bodies. You can generate miracle dice. You get a reactive move. Dominions can get out of a transport, including an immolator, shoot the enemy, and if the enemy moves closer to them, they can hide back in the immolator. Retributors have to stand there and die with their very weak profile. Sadly, that's where I'm going to have to put them. So, the immolator. You're no longer getting reroll to wound when you jump out of an immolator. It now removes cover from an enemy after it shot them. There's a lot of cover saves to be gained in 40k at the moment. Having an ability to ignore cover on every other unit that shoots at that unit is really nice, but flamers will already be ignoring cover with their special rule. It has gotten a bit worse, but despite the red appearance on the points update, it stayed the same points at 115. So it's a little bit worse and it costs the same points. That's overall a penalty to us, but ignoring cover can still be useful and its main thing is splitting up a battle sister unit especially at smaller games like a thousand points, that gives you more units to be controlling different objectives. Hey, if you have dominions, probably do want dominions with an immolator, you put the special weapons, like the melter guns and the superior, in the immolator, the other four sisters with bolt guns and the sister with the bolt gun and the simulacrum, they stay behind on an objective. They generate your miracle dice. The other sisters don't need to care about that, they can get to killing. So the immolator still splits up units and makes your units better. However, for the points, if we're just getting unit up there, the Rhino is so much cheaper. Immolator is good, but Rhino supremacy. You know, we have another transport, right? We have the Repressor. The Repressor's fun. It gives you a much bigger firing deck so you can have more models firing out. You don't need to leave the transport safety. You probably will do at some point because you want to get out onto an objective. And it can turn any unit into a sort of mini Dominion squad as we have emergency combat embarkation. If your sister's unit is going to get charged, you jump in the Repressor. Problem is, if it's near an objective, which is usually where you're dropping off your sisters, that means you're often giving up the objective to the enemy who will just charge the Repressor instead. But that's nice. It's a tough block, but it costs more points than the Immolator and it's nearly twice as many points as the Rhino. I think this is a unit that will have very specific uses. In the Bringers of Flame Detachment, which is very transport focused, it'll do well. And it also depends on your opponent allowing you to take Legends units, which you should be allowed to do anyway. But a lot of times the default becomes, let's play a tournament style game, even though we're not anywhere near a tournament and we're not playing a tournament level and we're just having fun with friends. So that's where the Repressor goes in C tier. The other Legends unit we have is the Shrine. The Battle Sanctum gives you cover, but there's a lot of cover going around on any kind of board, even if you're just placing whatever terrain you have there for fun. You should have enough cover. You'll be getting the benefit of cover. I have a video on cover that explains cover pretty well. And the Consecrated Ground lets you perform an additional Act of Faith. So this can combo with the Army of Faith detachment and then a unit can perform three acts of faith in one phase, but the battle sanctum isn't moving. You're gonna have to have a unit at the back, sitting there, something like Retributors, but they're so vulnerable to just getting shot. That one wound and three plus save isn't gonna save them, and if the enemy has no armor penetration, the benefit of cover doesn't even come into it. So I guess if you had Astrid and Agatha with a Retribute unit, and they all had heavy bolters, and you had a lot of acts of faith you needed to perform and you wanted to turn them all to sixes, then your heavy bolters could cause a bunch of devastating wounds. It's not worth it. 
it's the most extreme case of technically, technically it could work, but no way are you going to pay that many points for all of that to happen. It's not worth including. And Games Workshop is very much phasing out fortifications and flyers. We have no flyers, so fortifications are what gets pushed out. We have the Castigator. It's no longer getting various rerolls depending on the kind of gun you have and the kind of enemy you attack. Now you shoot a unit and all of your Adeptus Sororitas units that shoot at that unit in the rest of the phase will gain an extra point of armor penetration. This is something to make your regular battle sisters shoot better. It lets your dominions with flamers have an AP value as well as being auto hitting. If you're wanting to just do direct damage to an enemy unit, the exorcist may be better the Castigator Auto Cannons and the Castigator Battle Cannon are still very good turret weapons, and you still get three heavy bolters in support of them, so you can have one of the heavy bolters fire at whatever unit you want the rest of the army to destroy to get that armor penetration bonus, and the Battle Cannon or Auto Cannons can shoot at whatever you want dead, so it's still killing enemies, it's now force multiplying your army as well, and it's only gone up a little bit in points. It pains me to do so. And I'm sure I'll get many derisive comments about it down below, but the Castigator is A tier, while the Exorcist is B tier. Maybe the Adeptus Sororitas Codex is terrible and we should just throw it out if it's getting things like this wrong. Ah well, not everything in the A tier has to be taken, not everything in the B tier has to be ignored. You can just have an Exorcist and not the Castigator, because shrines on battle tanks is better than just big cannon on battle tank. Everyone has big cannon on battle tank. We're the only one that gets an organ that also shoots missiles. Celestian Psychrosants. They're our last like regular on foot three plus save battle sister unit. They've had a bit of an improvement, an extra attack on their halberds and maces. Their halberds now have sustained hits. Their maces now have lethal hits. You can mix it up in the unit. You don't have to have all maces and all halberds but you probably will because it's going to depend on the character you attach. If you attach a Palatine, you get lethal hits from the Palatine anyway, so you don't want to take the Maces. And their Sworn Protectors has improved. It's no longer, okay, enemies get minus one to wound that unit if there's a particular character in that squad. Now any character that's joining that unit will trigger this ability. Unlike Battle Sisters, you can't double up. If you're going with that, and having a really tough unit, that's fine, that will work. They're a close combat unit that costs at the moment 150 points for 10, the same as the Arcoflagellants, which are another tough close combat unit. If it's maybe a matter of style and you don't like the body horror of the Arcoflagellants and you want something more sister-like, the Celestian Sacrosancts are there. I'm still a little bit annoyed that there's no Celestians with guns. Again, Terrible codex, not fulfilling anything that it needs to do. Why do we even bother? Okay, so the Celestian Sacrosancts are going to be in B tier. You could have them as people did in the past to get onto objectives and perform secondary missions, but the Arcoflagellants can still be taken in a squad of three. So that's cheaper than five Celestian Sacrosancts. The Sacrosancts are better than their index version. I don't know if it's 15 points better for unit of five. That's three points more per model better. They can do more damage than their previous index version, but we usually weren't taking them for damage. It was for their toughness and to be a small unit if you didn't have an immolator to split a squad. If you got this far in the video and haven't just skipped ahead to be like, okay, it's a tier list. I can just go to the end and be like, okay, there's some things. This is why I explained what the tier list meant and all of the different tiers. But someone might just say, oh, wait, why is a repressor down there? What does that mean? Is it like that the only C tier unit? I'm thinking there's just A, B, C, D as pure rankings. As I'm supporting you with the Battle Sisters, it would be great if you could consider supporting me through Kofi. It's just dropping a little bit of tip money into my jar. And it's a lot of what funds me to keep this channel going. Thank you for your continued support. And my top tier Kofi supporters get their names listed in the end credits as special thanks. Right, let's talk about the more penitent hosty units. Penitent engines went up by 20 points per model. They haven't changed. So this is like attacks in case you take them in the penitent host attachment where they become really, really good because they're an absolute core of the army. It may be what ends up happening for the battle sisters just for like list building 
is you go for the penitent host and you take all the penitent units, or you go for one of the other detachments and almost entirely ignore those units. But they're still good. The penitent engines can still advance and charge. With a boost from the Triumph of St. Catherine in any detachment, you're going much faster and you can advance, still shoot because of your assault flamers, and then charge the enemy. Having a screaming penitent engine run alongside your transport in the Bringers of Flame detachment, remember that those heavy flamers will have an extra strength, that's really good. Even with the points increase, I think they're still worth taking at 75 points. Because of what they can do, I put penitent engines in A tier. Mortifiers cost J, K, L, M. They cost five points fewer than the penitent engines. They can have heavy bolters, so you can be a longer range threat and then the enemy has to deal with you. And they can be a better unit to sit on objectives. And then if the enemy charges you, you flail about and kill them, even if you die when they fight first. Because they charged, you can still fight on death. In the Hallowed Martyrs Detachment, you can get your bonuses to hit and wound when you die, as you are considered to have one wound left as you go down. So that's really nice even outside of the Penitent Host Attachment. However, when we're just sitting on objectives, we have other units for that, either split by an Immolator, or three Arco Flagellants, or we have Legends units that I'm going to mention shortly. To get straight into the face of the enemy, I would choose a Penitent Engine over a Mortifier. Mortifiers have improved, but I think Penitent Engines do it better. So, Mortifiers are B tier. Okay, the Penitent Repentia Squad. They are very expensive. 18 points per model, and all they have to protect them is a 6 plus invulnerable save and a 5 plus feel no pain. In the Penitent Host, that can be boosted to a 4 plus feel no pain, but you will probably only want to consider them for the Penitent Host detachment where they get a lot more bonuses. I'm really thinking that the Penitent Host units were unduly targeted because of how strong the Penitent Host can be. Repentia can't be joined by characters outside of an enhancement in the Penitent Host. So that is an extra expense on top of the 180 points for 10 in the unit. And you will want a max size unit if you're going to be including them. So with the enhancement, you can have a Palatine, which gives you lethal hits in addition to their new sustained hits on their massive chain swords. And with a stratagem, this can trigger on a 5 plus. And they do get full rerolls to hit and full rerolls to wound as long as their superior is alive. So no using that 3 plus save to try and tank some damage. Just take your lumps on your 6 plus invern and your 5 plus feel no pain and die like the disgrace you are. As they are so very squishy, you will either want to put them into strategic reserve to come on from a board edge or go into a rhino to support them, but that is adding even more expense to make the unit work. These are 18 points per model as of June 2024, and when you consider that Novitiates are nearly half that, you really need to make your Repentia do crazy damage to a dangerous enemy. Whatever the enemy's most powerful unit is, you need to hit that, and you need to kill that. You need to get your points back. If you don't think you can get your points back for Repentia, then you may wish to pass on Repentia completely. Because they're really good, but it's so very conditional, that's why they go in C tier. I wish that they had just upped the points on Catechism of Divine Penitence even more if they expected that particular combo to be a key problem. And finally, the legendary Crusaders and Death Cult Assassins. Their unit rules have gotten so much better. They've gained extra wounds, they do more damage, their abilities trigger more easily. They're really good. And their points, according to the points document, they can still be taking units of 2, 4, and 6, and it uses the earlier points version when the index didn't tax them as much for having a unit of 2. So you can have a very cheap unit of 2, and they can hold your objectives. Or you can have very cheap units of 2, maybe the Death Cult Assassins try and assassinate an enemy character. If they fail, there's a miracle dice you just gained, because a unit with the Adeptus Rorotas keyword has died. Both of them are an A-tier unit. As long as you are allowed Legends units, I would definitely include them. That's my tier list for the current points as of June 2024, so you know which units you should look at when you're making your first army list with the Codex. And this advice should remain the same for quite a long time. If, as I had in the past, where I reconsider, oh yeah, Repentia are actually better than Arco Flagellants in my opinion, then there will be dedicated videos on those particular changes. 
Overall, our Adeptus Sororitas units will cost more points. This is good. Higher points means fewer units to buy or carry to your games. And if you have lots of models already, you can pick the best ones to make your army work with. The A tier units. We are much more of an elite army again, which is really nice, but we retain a lot of the glass cannon feel. Use your Hospitallers and your Imagifiers to prevent us being so soft. Make sure you go down hard. Here's the next Adeptus Rotas video that I recommend. My darlings and viewers, special thanks to those who support me through Ko-Fi and YouTube. Have a great day of 40k.